Hello boys and girls, how are you today, Tuesday? Well, I hope you're doing great. And um, we're gonna begin with page 186. That's our first page today. Today is only three pages. I know yesterday we did four. Today we're only gonna do, we're only gonna do three today. We're gonna begin with page, once again, 186. 186 you are on the green packet you have to make sure you're working on the green packet this week all right so do not forget to write your name and your last name go ahead and write your name and then uh well let's see what we have to do here well, as you can see this week we're gonna focus on adjectives and uh, it's gonna be on adjectives for taste and smell at least on this page and it says draw a line under each adjective then write the adjective all right so i want to remind you boys and girls what is an adjective well an adjective is a, a word that describes the noun right or describes the action um the adjectives is is the word that is like the flavor in the food right you might uh, have a big hamburger but if it doesn't if it's if it doesn't have salt then it doesn't taste it doesn't taste good so the adjective is like the, the, the taste to the food. It makes, um, it tells you how things look, how things smell, how things taste. Um, it tells you how, how things feel too, right? So it goes hand, hand in hand with your senses. Today we're going to focus on adjective for taste and smell. So adjectives that describe how something tastes and how something smells like. Let's see what we have to do. Once again, we're going to take a look at number one. We're going to find the adjective and we're going to write it on the line. Let's read number one. I smell the sweet roses. Which one do you think is the adjective? Don't forget, the adjective describes the noun or an action. In this case, it describes a noun. Which one is the noun here? The noun is roses. How are the roses? How do the roses smell? Do they smell, um, do they smell sour? No, right? They smell sweet. Sweet is right here. So we underline the adjective. We're going to underline it. And now we are going to write it down. Sweet. Sweet, it's not only an adjective for smell, but also for taste. A cake tastes sweet. Or chocolate taste. Or chocolate taste, like David said, yeah. Chocolate taste is sweet. Number two, we taste the bitter lemon. Now, which one do you think is the noun here? The noun is lemon. How does the lemon taste? The lemon tastes bitter. Bitter. Bitter, bitter is our adjective right now. Bitter. So we underline it and then we write it down. All right, let's see, let's see number three. Number three is actually a question. Can you see the question mark at the end? So I want you to, when you read it, you read it as a question. Does the milk smell sour? That's a good question to ask before you drink it, right? Does the milk smell sour? No, boys and girls, don't forget, the adjective goes hand in hand with an a noun or with an action let's see does the milk smell sour so now it goes also with an action smell does it smell sour so which one do you think is the adjective sour right sour sour is our adjective because it's telling you boys and girls how the milk might, might smell so these are the three, these are the three adjectives that we already underline and copy um, from sentences one through three. Sweet, bitter, and sour. All right, boys and girls, now we're going to continue to sentence four and five. Now here we have to do something different. It says draw a line under each adjective. And add commas 
where they are needed. Now, here we're gonna, I'm gonna remind you about something else. Adding commas, we're gonna add commas. You remember what commas are? This is a comma. So comma goes between words. Now, do you remember when we use commas? Most of the time, boys and girls, we use commas when we are listing more than one thing, two or more things, actually. So we say some nuts are crunchy, sweet, and salty. Here we have three adjectives. We have crunchy, sweet, and salty. And what are these adjectives? Um, what are these adjectives telling you about or describing? This adjective, crunchy, sweet, and salty, are describing nuts. Nuts is your noun here. Now, since we have three of them. We have to put, to put commas between them. So we say some nuts are crunchy, comma, sweet, comma, and then and, because this is the last one, salty. And that's it. No more commas. Some nuts are crunchy, comma, sweet, comma, and salty. Let's do the last one. The fruit was sweet, moist, and chewy. So here we have three adjectives again. We have sweet, moist, and chewy. These three adjectives are describing the fruit. The fruit is your noun. Now, since we have three of them, we're going to put commas between them. We're going to say the fruit was sweet, comma, moist, comma, and chewy. These are your three adjectives. These are words that describe things that you can taste and smell. Sweet, moist, and chewy. All right, do not forget the commas. Very important because they're here they're asking you to put commas. All right, boys and girls. So let's go ahead and turn to our next page. Do not forget that I need your name. Very important. I need at least your name uh, on the top of every page. Super important, boys and girls. Do not forget to write your name. I really, 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 really need your name at the top of every page that we complete on the packet. All right. Um, it says change. By the way, th this is a new page. This is page 187 now. This is our second page for today. This is page 187. And now we are going to be using different words. And some of them, by the way, some of them are adjective too. So let's change a repeated word to an exact word. Use a word from the books or you can use your own too. Hmm. All right, let's see. Let's read the, the words that we have inside the box. This is your box right now. We have brr, it. You remember? I, I, G, H says I. Brr, it. Bright. Fl, u, flu. Or flu? Flu or flu? In, don't forget, E A says E. D, Aun, O W says Ow. Oni, funny. The Y at the end is, is acting like a long I. E, saying E. Er, An, Ran. And then, um, well, it's not, it's not long I, you're right, it's not long I. It's funny. All right. Hi. Hi. It does have that I-G-H. This is I. The long I sound I. And then blue. Ooh, blue. And then we have sunny. Sunny. All right. So these these Y don't, don't actually say the long I sound. They say the long E sound. All right. So we're going to be using these words. To replace the other words, the underlined words. Because some of these underlined words, they are repeated twice in the sentence. And we don't want to repeat words. We want to have, um, we, we have enough words to not repeat them, right? So let's see. It says, Toad went fast. You remember Toad from the story? And the kite went up. Hmm. So we have went twice here. Toad went fast and the kite went up. They want us to replace the first went. Toad blank fast and the kite went up. So what word can we use to replace went here? Went is a verb. So we are going to need to replace it with a verb. 
We're not going to use an adjective to replace a verb. We need another verb. Now, if we need a verb, let's find the verbs, right? Let's go to the box and see which are the verbs. Bright, it's not a verb. It's an adjective. Flu is a verb. So, all right, so we can use it. So, let's underline it. How about mean? No. How about down? No. Funny? No. These are all adjectives, right? Run. Run is another adjective. All right. How about high? No. Run is a verb, not an adjective. High is an adjective. We're not going to use it to replace the verb. Blue. Is blue a verb? No. It's another adjective. It tells you color. Sunny. 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 It, it is an adjective too because it tells you how the how the weather looks like, how the sky looks like. So we're the only two verbs that we have. The two verbs that we have are flew and run. Now, which one is a good verb to replace went here? Let's see. Toad flew fast and the kite went up. Did the toad, can the toad fly? No. So flew is not a good idea. But we can use run because that's what he did. Toad run. R -an. Toad ran fast and the kite went up. You remember when he had to run in the meadow? He ran so many times until the, fi the kite finally um, went up in the sky. All right, I'm moving on to my second sentence. My second one says, the little birds laughed at Toad's little kite. So here you can see the word little twice. We don't want to have the word little two times. Little and little. No, that's too much little. We're going to replace the word little. Now, as you can see, boys and girls, little is an adjective. We need to replace little with another adjective. Let's see which one could be a good adjective. Let's read the, the rest of the sentence, the beginning of the sentence first. The little birds laughed at Toe's blank kite. We need a word to describe kite. Now, I'm going to use another color. So we can look for the adjective. We said that bright is an adjective. Mean is not an adjective. Well, sometimes it is, so we can underline it. Down is an adjective. Funny is an adjective. High is an adjective sometimes. Blue is an adjective most of the time. And then sunny is an adjective too. Now, which adjective can we use to describe the kite? Can we say the bright kite, the mean kite, the down kite? Let's read the sentence one more time. The little birds laughed at Toad's blank kite. Which one is a good adjective to describe kite? Could be the funny kite? Could it be the high kite? Could it be the blue kite or the sunny kite? I think the best adjective to describe the kite will be blue i think that will be the best one blue the little birds laughed at toe's little kite we cannot use little twice we're going to replace it the little birds laughed at toad's blue kite so it's telling you now the kite is blue all right boys and girls so now we're going to move to, is this the last one? Yeah, because there's only three. Okay, I see. All right, let's do the last one, number three. The pretty kite danced in the pretty sky. Not good to have the word pretty twice. We don't want that. Uh, we want to replace the word pretty, and they want us to replace the word pretty the second time, not the first one. The pretty kite danced in the blank sky. Now, what word can we use to describe pretty? Pretty is an adjective. So we need to describe the word pretty. So we need to replace the word pretty with another adjective. Let's see. Don't forget that the adjectives are in green. We underline the adjectives um, using green. What word can we use to describe the sky? Um, we don't want to say pretty sky anymore. So what word can we use to describe the sky? Can we say the bright sky? Mm, sounds good to me. The mean sky? No, a sky cannot be mean. Because it's not a person. The down sky? No, because the sky is very up there. The funny sky? I don't think the sky is going to make you um, any jokes. So no. The high sky? Oh, so high could be. The blue? We already use blue. How about the sunny? 
Uh, so which one do you want to use? Do you want to use bright? Do you want to use sunny? Do you want to use high? I'll go for bright. I like bright. The pretty kite danced in the bright sky. Okay, so I'm going to use bright. Brr. I, do you remember who says I here? I here is said by three letters together. I, G, H. Bright. Bright. The bright sky. All right. And um, these are your three words for these sentences. The, the, we replace a verb and then we replace two adjectives. Do not forget, boys and girls, that you must write your name at the top of every page. Por favor, muy importante, no se olviden de escribirme su nombre en la parte de arriba de cada página. Because I go crazy without your names. It's really, really bad for me, boys and girls. All right, so we're going to work on our last page. This is our last page for today. Let's see what we have to do here. So once again, our last page is page 188. 188. And we're going to be adding a D, I, N, G, E, R, E, S, T, and finally E, S. Now, we're not going to be adding that to the word because the words that we are already using the words inside the box, they already come with these different addings. So it says, write the word that best completes each sentence. We're going to use the words from the books. So we have five sentences, and these are the words that we're going to use to, com to, to complete the sentences. We have one, two, three, four, and five uh, words. We're going to use one word for every sentence. We have smaller, smaller. When you see ER at the end of the word, you're comparing two things. Jumped, jumped. It the at the end tells you that the verb is in the past. It already happened. Writing, I-N-G at the end. So, so far we had E-R, we had E-D, and now we have I-N-G. I-N-G, writing. It means that it's happening right now. Highest, E-S-T at the end. So, the E-S-T makes this noun the top one. Highest is the top one. And then foxes, ES at the end of a noun, boys and girls, means that it's more than one, more than one. All right, so you're ready to use these words? Yes, here we go then. Number one, those trees are the blank. Which, um, which adjective would you like to use? Those trees are the smaller? No, because... Oh, the smaller of all. I'm sorry, I had two more words over here. Those trees are the smaller of all. That doesn't make any sense, right? Because when we use ER at the end of a noun, we're comparing two different things. Or maybe two things that are alike. So those trees are those trees are the jumped of all. Uh, no sense. Oh, sorry. Those trees are the riding of all. Trees cannot even ride. Those trees are the highest. Yes, some trees grow very, very fast. Highest of all. So as you can see, the way the, the sentence is, um, it's the words in the sentence are order. It's telling you, boys and girls, that it's like the prettiest of all, the highest of all. This, these trees are the top trees, whatever they are. They are, they are the highest of all. All right, let's do, uh, let's cross our highest because we already use it. And then we go to number two. That bird is blank than this one. We are comparing two things. We're comparing this bird that you have over here. This bird that you have over here, we're comparing. Oh my goodness, I think I forgot to draw a bird. So here we, um, I kind of did a bird. This bird or that bird, and we're comparing that bird to this one over here. So you can see you have two birds. We're comparing that bird to this bird. What adjective can we use? That bird is smaller than this one, jumped than this one, riding than this one, or foxes than this one. 
you were right if you said ER at the end. We're gonna we're comparing two different things. So we need to use ER at the end of the noun. Smaller. ER. We're comparing. This bird is smaller than this one. Number three. Who is blank a red bike? By the way, we already used smaller. We cross it out. We have jumped, riding, and foxes. That's three number three. Who is blank a red bike? Who is what? Who is jumped? A red bike or who is riding? You are so right. That one makes so much sense. So much sense. Who is riding? It's happening right now. Who's on the red bike right now? Who is riding a red bike? So so far we have highest, smaller, and riding. And now we are ready to move on to number four. Number four: a frog blank into the pond. We already have, we already used writing. There's only two more words left to use. Jumped or foxes. A frog blank into the pond. Which one makes more sense? Jumped or foxes? Jumped, right? So we write our base word. Jump. Jump. And then we add ed. Jumped. See? A frog jumped into the pond. It already happened. That's why we have ED at the end. If it's happening right now, we say a frog is jumping into the pond that we, we wrote here. And then the last one, boys and girls, five blank ran to the woods. Five what? Five foxes. Five is more than one. So instead of saying five fox run to the woods, we have to say foxes. We add ES to show that it's more than one. There's actually five of them. Five foxes run to the woods. And that was it, boys and girls, for today. Um, once again, please do not forget to do your spelling city. You have a small activity to do every day with your spelling words. So take advantage of that and well, try to learn as much as you can every day. Bye, boys and girls. I'll see you later for math.